This is Midday Classics on WSKG. I'm Bill Snyder. Hyde Hall is presenting the musicians of Malwick and Lady Alexandra Foley with the Zellner String Quartet Project in Hyde Hall on Sunday, September 10th at 7 p.m. And I have three guests, Dr. Christopher Brellux, Lady Alexandra Foley, and Anne-Marie Barker-Schwartz. Christopher, how did the concert come about? Well, serendipity is the short answer to that question. I was in Newport, Rhode Island, giving a lecture at one of the Newport mansions because I was I was involved in the HBO series, The Gilded Age. And after my lecture, I'm walking through my hotel lobby and I see none other than Julian Fellows, the creator of The Gilded Age and Dutton Abbey and the many other amazing, uh, amazing projects he's involved with. And so I walked up and I introduced myself and next to him, was Alex Foley, who immediately came up and said, hey, do you know about the Zollner Quartet? I'd never heard of them. Uh, I'm a saxophonist. Uh, that's no excuse. Um, but I wasn't up, into, up on uh, early 20th century string quartets, the performers. I knew the, the music, the composers, but not so much the musicians. And she started talking to me about this amazing family history she has. And I decided we needed to have breakfast the next day in the hotel. We were both staying at the, the hotel. And we, we had a, a really meaningful conversation about this very unique ensemble. And the, the conversation naturally turned towards, well, what can be done with this amazing story? What would be a great way to tell the story? And I mentioned I'm Dean of the School of Music at SUNY Schenectady and certainly uh, I, I have faculty who work for me who are amazing musicians, like Anne Marie Barker Schwartz, an amazing violinist and chamber musician. And perhaps Anne Marie might be interested in, in partnering with us and presenting at college at SUNY Schenectady and other, other places in the area. And that became the impetus of looking into seeing what was possible. Alex, can you tell us a little bit about the history of uh, the Zollner Quartet? And I've done a little bit of research, and they must have been superhuman to do the, the uh, concertizing that they did. Yes, it's an extraordinary story. Well, uh, the quartet was founded by my great-grandfather, Joseph Zollner, in 1904 uh, in Stockwell, California, after they had moved from Brooklyn, New York, Antoinette having fallen out of a tree and broken her hip, so warm weather was uh, better for her. Um, they were then, um, as they uh, performed, um, the children, of course, were very young. I mean, Amanda's was only 12 at the time. Um, they started to perform around Northern California, and they were uh, they performed uh, in San Francisco and were heard by Mrs. Ethel Crocker, the founder of, well, married to the founder of the Crocker Bank, William Crocker, and she sort of fell in love with them and decided that she would be their patroness. She paid for them to go to Brussels so that the children could study music at the famous Brussels Conservatory of Music under Cesar Thompson. Um, they then became well known there and sort of championed by Cesar who later um, introduced them to uh, society people and, and musicians. Um, they were then summoned by the Countess of Flanders to perform for the Belgian King and Queen. Um, my great grandfather was further summoned by the last Tsar of Russia. Um, and they began to perform all over Europe in major cities. Um, World War I was looming and they moved back to America uh, in 19, early 1912. And they had a what must have been a rather amazing business manager, or what I guess we would call today agent, um, Harry and Arthur Culbertson. We're not clear whether they were father and son or two brothers. But anyway, they operated out of New York and Chicago. And as soon as they got back to the US, um, they were basically given a sort of schedule which went up and down 
sorts of threats of North America, including including Canada, literally from Oshkosh to Montana, as my grand aunt said. Um, so all in all, they did about 3,000 performances from the time they moved back to the US to 1929. Um, quite astonishing and also in a very unconventional manner not just to the sort of audiences that you would expect but also to uh, an insane asylum the great plains oklahoma to cheyenne native cheyenne indians um to uh small so-called tank towns in the middle of nowhere um they championed avant-garde composers and musicians and um, were, were well ahead of their time. They were naturally uh, very, very liberal. Their, uh, Antoinette was the lead violin, which is extraordinary for a woman in 1916 over her brothers. Um, they, um, their best friend was the African-American architect, Paul Revere Williams. In 1922, they founded the Zellner Conservatory of Music in Los Angeles, um, which uh, the site of which today is the a hole in the ground where the Wilshire and Western LA Metro is being constructed. Um, and um, they were great friends of people like Einstein, who came to stay with them, played with them every weekend at their home in West Hollywood, Charlie Chaplin, Walt Disney, Will Rogers. And they knew all the important people of the day uh, and became part of California history. Unfortunately, the story was lost when my mother moved to England uh, with my father, who she'd met in New York. And, um, and when my, 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 my uncle, who was not particularly interested in music, um, left all the material that's now in the UCLA enormous archive, some 50 boxes, two truckloads of it, um, were uh, left in barns, discovered by my cousin Amanda's daughter and subsequently rescued and finally donated to UCLA scripts and USC. Um, so it's an incredible story which I am trying to resurface in a book called The Lost Quartet and Christopher Brellux and Anne-Marie have been incredibly helpful in helping me um, get contextualize the music that they played and advising me on how to best position the story. Can I impose on you to tell the story about their encounter with Helen Keller? Absolutely. So in 1916, um, the quartet were performing uh, Charles Skilton's um, uh, Two Indian Dances, which he had written and dedicated to them. Uh, word got out, and there was a lot in the press about this very extraordinary moment where they performed for six hundred Cheyenne Indians and the chief of the Rogue River Indians, who was a friend of Charles Skilton and had been a former pupil. And um, Helen Keller's um, uh, team, Helen Keller lived in Oklahoma and had a, had a carer and word got out and she wanted to meet them. And so they were sort of asked to come and perform for her, which they did in 1916. And she sort of was absolutely taken with them, so much so that she spent hours with my grandfather, who sort of put her hand on a kind of silk cushion, and she could apparently sort of feel the music through the vibrations. And he worked with her on this years later as well. And her uh, experience of, of, of listening, quote unquote, uh, to them was, was reported in all the national newspapers and the musical courier and is a subject of, of enormous fascination by people. And there are, my mother inherited a whole trunk load of photographs of them together with her. And some of them are in my book. Anne Marie, can you tell us what's on the program and is this representative of the program that they would have played? It's absolutely representative. They um, included what was then contemporary music um, and 
composers that today we're really kind of not so aware of anymore, but their programming, taking for example, the year 1916, 1917, included works of the Dutch composer Jan Brandt Bies, um, also of Alfred Hill, who was originally from New Zealand and then spent most of his life working in Australia, and who was a big advocate of including um, Maori uh, tunes, so indigenous New Zealand tunes and his music. Um, they also perform music of Frank Bridge and Eugene Goosens and uh, of course Charles Skilton, who Alex mentioned, who was an American composer who was based out in Kansas and was very much interested in incorporating, much like Dvorak has suggested to American composers, Native American uh, melodies within his music. And so we see a real championing of composers that were alive and perhaps working a little bit outside of the normal idiom at the time. And they're, if you look at their concert programming over the years, you see always this inclusion of new material. And I think really sort of groundbreaking material in many ways. If you look at the repertory of some of the other big quartets at the time, like the Flans Allais Quartet or the Kneisel Quartet, um, there may be a, a small inclusion of some of this type of re new repertory, but mainly they're playing more the traditional traditional musical canon like Beethoven or Mozart or Brahms. Um, so I, I think that the Zollner Quartet is both unique for its willingness to play in unusual venues and the frequency of its performances, um, the rigorousness of their touring sort of, and then this really special repertory. Once again, the musicians of Malwick and Lady Alexandra Foley are presenting the Zellner String Quartet Project at Hyde Hall on Sunday, September 10th at 7 p.m. If you'd like more information, you can go online to hydehall.org. And my guests have been Dr. Christopher Brellux, Lady Alexandra Foley, and Anne-Marie Barker-Schwartz. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Bill.